What's going on everybody? In this episode, I'm going to discuss a lecture that I attended at the University of Washington. Lormir Mosley, who is a pain researcher, uh, recently presented on seven amazing pain facts that can change your life. And so I wanted to discuss some of the ideas and topics that he talked about and some of the take home messages that I got from that presentation. So one of the interesting things that I learned from the lecture was that your brain is always kind of looking out for you, whether it's consciously or unconsciously. And this is partially based on research by Abby Taber. And in one of the research articles, what they did was they had people estimate how far away a switch was. And they had basically two different conditions. One where they uh, had no pain, so it was just general control. And then another group where they would create pain in a hand and then ask how far away the switch is. And when the switch would stop the pain in the hand, people would systematically rate that switch closer to them. And from a pain standpoint, this makes a lot of sense. So if something is going to be a benefit, so if that switch is going to stop the pain, your brain will say that it is closer to you so that you'll be more likely to reach out or do whatever it is to stop the pain. In another study by Abby Taber, which hasn't been published yet, what they would do is they would take people with osteoarthritis and they would walk by some stairs and they would say, oh, how many stairs do you think there are right there? And then they would go by another set and they would say, oh, we're going to go walk up those stairs. How many stairs do you think there are? And so when you were actually going to walk up the stairs, people would estimate that there were a lot more stairs than they actually were. And again, what that means is that your brain is protecting you. So if it's saying there's a lot of stairs, maybe we don't want to go up those stairs because maybe the arthritis in our knees is going to limit us or something like that. And when you think about that, that's just some really interesting stuff. So your brain is protecting you when you're in pain. So it's changing your perception of the world. And so in normal daily life, you wouldn't necessarily think about uh, how many stairs there are or how far of a walk something is. But when you're in pain, your brain thinks about that and will overestimate those things because it's trying to protect you. Another interesting thing that was talked about during the lecture is that your brain takes all data into consideration when we're talking about pain. And so one of the articles that was presented was a research article by Bartolo. And what they did was they looked at the withdrawal reflex. So if you stepped on something, let's say a Lego, and you instantly lift your leg up before you know what happens, or when you put your hand on a stove and you withdraw it before you're really conscious of what's going on, that's the withdrawal reflex. And what they did in the research article was that they changed the odors in the experiments. And so in the research article, they had three different environments. One with a unpleasant odor, one with a neutral odor, and then one with a pleasant odor. And what they found was that in the condition with an unpleasant odor, the withdrawal reflex was a little bit more rapid, and compared to the pleasant odor, it was a little bit more delayed. And so the only thing that changed in that experiment was odor. And so what smell that person was feeling and the unpleasant odor made that reflex a lot quicker than with the pleasant odor. And so that one article only talks about smell, but other senses can also have this similar effect. And so in another article by Van Selm, what they looked at was they would change the visual input. So what they ended up doing was creating delayed onset muscle soreness in the quads. And so that's basically that soreness you get after exercising. And they had four different conditions. One where you would look at the injured quad, so the one that has DOMS. One where you look at the other quad, the one that wasn't worked out. Another category where you would just look at a neutral object, and then one where you would look at the injured limb with a magnifying glass. And so this is the same amount of delayed onset muscle soreness, but the only thing that changed was our visual input. So we saw a bigger leg, and that created more pain. And so again, the only thing that changed in this research article was our visual input. So with the magnifying glass, we saw a bigger leg, 
and that resulted in more pain. And similarly, in another article, what they did was they actually flipped the magnifying glass. So instead of making it bigger, it would make it smaller. And just as you would expect, that actually reduced the amount of pain that someone experienced. And so when we look at this, pain is much more than just tissue damage. It's influenced by a lot of other factors. And so if we're looking at treatment of chronic pain, well, maybe let's say we have somebody go bake some cookies or make some fresh pie or something like that. Well, those aromas can help kind of change their perception of pain, which actually might help them recover a little bit quicker. And so the data gather doesn't necessarily just have to do with whenever you're actually experiencing pain. It can be data that was stored before you had pain as well. And so this kind of goes into your knowledge base, your beliefs, your attitude, all those kind of things about pain can have an influence on the pain that you experience. For example, let's say you have an MRI. You had low back pain for a long time and then you finally get an MRI. And there was some disc degeneration and maybe you had like a disc bulge or something like that. And the doctor says, oh, you have the back of a 70 year old. And all that being said, that can negatively influence the pain that you experience. Similarly, let's say that you know somebody who has chronic shoulder pain, either it was a family member or a really close friend, and they had imaging done, and they found a rotator cuff tear, and they had to have it surgically repaired, and that's the only way that they were able to um, recover from their shoulder pain. Well, your brain's going to take account of that and say, well, my shoulder pain, I've had it for a long time, and it's very similar to what that family member experienced. I need to have surgery as well to fix this issue. And so again, this really just goes to demonstrate that pain is not simply the result of tissue damage. And because Professor Mosley did such a good job about wording this, I wanted to quote him directly and he said, pain is not just a sensory signal, pain is a protective feeling that is modulated by any credible evidence that you are in danger. And so to tie all this together, the lecture also touched on neurotags, which are groups of neurons and they help to kind of explain why these things can be linked. And so when these neurotags are activated, they can lead to an output, and that output can be pain, which is a protective mechanism. And so let's say as part of that neurotag, when we first develop low back pain, well, we were really stressed at work. And so now whenever we sit for long periods of time at work, that neurotag can get activated again, and we get low back pain while we're at work. And as these neurotags are more frequently activated, your body gets better at learning how to activate them. And so it becomes much more effective at producing low back pain. And this is similar to how you learn most things. So how you learn how to ride a bike, or how to read, or do math, or play the guitar. The more often you do it, the more efficient your body gets, and the better it is at learning how to do that. So those were my main takeaways from the lecture by Professor Lorimer Mosley. I linked all of the articles that I could find in the description below. The University of Washington also recorded the lecture, so if you wanted to watch the lecture as well, the link will be in the description below. And so hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give a big thumbs up to this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel.